Welcome to an introduction to antiderivatives and indefinite integration. Let's first consider these two questions here. If f prime of x equals one, then what would f of x be? So we're given the derivative of f is equal to one. The question is what would be the function f of x? So we're looking for a function that has a derivative equal to one. So we should recognize that the derivative of x with respect to x is equal to one. So our function f of x could just be f of x equals x. But because the derivative of a constant is also zero, we could add a constant on here, and the derivative would still be equal to one. So f of x is equal to x plus c. Notice how here there's an infinite number of functions that have a derivative equal to one. In this case, we say that f of x is the antiderivative of f prime of x, because its derivative is equal to one. Looking at our notes below, an antiderivative of a function f of x is any function big F of x where big F prime of x equals F of x. So normally when talking about antiderivatives, we don't use this notation here. We let the derivative function be equal to little f. So in this case, little f of x would be equal to one, and we let the antiderivative be equal to big F of x. So in this case, big F of x would be equal to x plus c. And the reason big F is the antiderivative of little f is because f prime of x is equal to one, which equals little f of x. Next, if f prime of x equals two x, then what would f of x be? So here we're given the derivative is equal to two x. We want to find a function that has the given derivative. We should recognize the derivative of x squared is equal to two x. So we could let f of x be equal to x squared but again, because the derivative of any constant is equal to zero, we could add any constant here on the end. So let's write plus c, where again c is any constant. So f of x is the antiderivative of f prime of x. But again, we normally don't use this notation when referring to antiderivatives. We let the derivative function be little f of x, and the antiderivative be big F of x. So here, big F of x is x squared plus c. And again, the reason big F is the antiderivative of little f is because f prime of x equals two x, which equals little f of x. So referring back to our notes again, the antiderivative of a function f of x is a whole family of functions written big F of x plus c, which we've done here in black, where big F prime of x equals f of x, and c represents any constant. The antiderivative is also called the indefinite integral. The notation used for the antiderivative is shown here, where this first symbol here is the integral sign, and the dx on the end here must be included. It indicates which variable we're integrating with respect to, and the function f of x is called the integrand. So we say that we anti-differentiate or integrate or find the indefinite integral of a function this process is called anti-differentiation or integration. And just like we have derivative formulas, we also have integral formulas. So here on the left we have common differentiation formulas, and here on the right we have common integration formulas. Let's look at some examples. Here we want to find the antiderivative of x to the third minus 10x plus three with respect to x. So one of the properties of integrals that we don't often use is we can write this as a sum or difference of three separate integrals. We can write this as the integral of x to the third minus the integral of 10x plus the integral of three. Another property we don't often use is that if we have a coefficient like we have here, we can factor it out. So we could also write this as the integral of x to the third minus 10 times the integral of x plus the integral of three. And now we'll integrate each of these separately. So to integrate x to the third with respect to x, we'll apply the power property of integration shown here. So we add one to the exponent and then divide by the new exponent, and we'll leave the plus c until the very end. So the antiderivative of x to the third would be x to the power of three plus one or four divided by four, and we have minus 10 times the integral of x, which is x to the first. So we add one to the exponent and then divide by that new exponent. 
So we'd have x to the power of one plus one is two, divided by two, plus the antiderivative of any constant is the constant times x. So the antiderivative of three with respect to x would be three x, and then we have plus c, our constant of integration. And now let's go ahead and simplify. Let's write this first term as one-fourth x to the fourth. Notice here we can simplify, there's one, two, and two, and five twos and ten. So we have minus five x squared plus three x plus c. So this is the antiderivative of x to the third minus ten x plus three. So we could say that big F of x is equal to one-fourth x to the fourth minus five x to the second plus three x plus c. This is the antiderivative function because big F prime of x equals the integrand function of x to the third minus ten x plus three. So whenever we find an indefinite integral or we find an antiderivative, we can't always verify it by determining the derivative and making sure it matches the integrand function. Now for this example, we're not going to write this as three separate integrals. We'll just integrate each term. But we do have to change the form of the second and third terms in the integrand function in order to apply the power rule of integration shown here. We'll write the square root of x using a rational exponent we'll write five over x to the second using a negative exponent. So let's write this as the integral of four x to the seventh minus eight. And now for the square root of x, the index is two, the exponent is one. So the square root of x is equal to x to the one half. And then we have plus five divided by x to the second is the same as five x raised to the power of negative two. So plus five x the power of negative two, integrated with respect to x. And now we'll just integrate each term. So the antiderivative of four x to the seventh would be four times the antiderivative of x to the seventh. So we add one to the exponent, that'd be x to the eighth. Divide by the new exponent of eight, minus eight times the antiderivative of x to the one half. So we'd have x to the power of one half plus one, that's one and a half or three halves, divided by three halves, and then plus five times x to the power of negative two plus one, that's negative one, divided by negative one, and then don't forget the constant of integration, so plus c. And now we simplify. You notice here four and eight simplify, there's one four and four, and two fours and eight, so we can write this as x to the eighth divided by two, or one half x to the eighth. Remember a fraction bar means division, so this is minus eight, and then divided by three halves is the same as times the reciprocal of two thirds. We'll simplify this product in the next step. And then here, five divided by negative one is negative five, so instead of plus negative five, let's write minus five x to the power of negative one plus c. Let's continue simplifying. So we have one half x to the eighth. Here nothing simplifies, so we have minus sixteen thirds x to the three halves. Let's write this as minus five divided by x plus c. So this would be our antiderivative, meaning the derivative of this function would be equal to the integrand function of four x to the seventh minus eight times the square root of x plus five divided by x squared. Next we have the integral of 3.5, and notice how we have this dy here, which means we're integrating with respect to y now, not x. So we know the integral of k with respect to x is equal to kx plus c, but because we're integrating with respect to y, not x, the antiderivative function is equal to 3.5y plus c. If we differentiate 3.5y plus c with respect to y, we do get 3.5. Next we have the integral of e raised to the power of p, integrated with respect to p. Looking at the integral formula here on the right, the integral of e to the x with respect to x is equal to e to the x plus c, and therefore the integral of e to the p with respect to p would just be e to the p plus c. Let's take a look at two more. Here we have the integral of five divided by x, integrated with respect to x. 
In this case, it might be helpful to factor out the five and write this as five times the integral of one divided by x dx. And now looking at our formulas, we can see that the antiderivative of one over x, or the integral of one over x, with respect to x is equal to natural log absolute value of x plus c. So here we'd have five times natural log absolute value of x plus c. This last example looks a little bit different because we have a product. Let's first multiply this out and then we'll integrate. So we'll have four products. So we'll have the integral of x squared and then we have minus three x plus three x, that's zero. And then we have three times negative three, that's negative nine or minus nine. And now we'll integrate each term. So the integral of x squared with respect to x, we'd have x to the power of Add one to the exponent, that'd be two plus one or three, divided by the new exponent, minus the antiderivative of nine with respect to x would just be nine x, and then plus the constant of integration. Let's go ahead and rewrite this as one third, x to the third minus nine x plus c. Okay, I hope you found this introduction helpful.